Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Pramod Jetwani. I am a consultant urologist and a uro onco surgeon. Today we will be talking about kidney stone disease. Uh, kidney stone is a very layman term. We the other terms for it is also called as kidney ki patri or gurde ki patri or in Marathi we called it mut khada. But the proper medical term for it is urolithiasis. Urolithiasis, it's a Greek word which comes from uros means urine, lithos means stone. So any stone which is formed in the urinary system, it's called as urolithiasis. Now urinary system is basically form of kidney. From kidney there is a tube called as ureter. The ureter opens up inside the bladder and it passes out from is called as urethra. So kidney, ureter, bladder and urethra constitute of a urinary system. So any stone which is formed here is called as urolithiasis. So I will be talking about what are kidney stones, what are the types of kidney stones, what are the symptoms of kidney stones. The fourth thing, what are the treat investigations done for the evaluation of the kidney stones. The fifth option is the treatment of kidney stones. And sixth, I'll be talking about the prevention and precautions. What are the preventive measures to be taken to prevent the kidney stones? So, uh, kidney stones are uh, basically uh, the most common patients what we get in our OPD practice. 60 to 70 percent of the patients are of the stone diseases. It's very rampant, almost 50 to 10 percent of the population are suffering from the kidney stone diseases. The most common, commonly age group seen for the kidney stone disease is from the age of 20 to 40 to 45 years. This is the very common age group for the patients to develop kidney stones. It's very common in men's than women. Uh, so, what are the types of kidney stones? Uh, the most common type is calcium oxalate, which is comes around 80 to 90 percent of your stone diseases. Which are there are few other types of calcium stones, which include calcium phosphate, calcium triple phosphate. The other second commonest type is uric acid stone, which includes 8 to 10 percent of your stone disease. Where are there are few rare stones like cysteine stones? Struoid stones. Struoid stones are more commonly the infectious stones which we call. These are the types of kidney stones. So now symptoms. What are the common symptoms a stone patient can come to you? The most common symptom is pain. They will typically hold their hand here and they say I am having pain over here. The stone pain is very dreadful, very painful. It is like a throbbing pain or a stabbing pain we call it. Patient will say, I am having very severe pain. If you really want to compare the stone pain, it's almost similar like what a woman has a labor pain. It's almost similar to that. Associated with pain, patient may complain of vomiting sensation or he may be doing vomiting. The third most common symptom for a stone patient is hematuria. They may say that they are passing a slightly dark color urine or they are passing blood in urine or they may say they are going to urination very frequently. These are the common symptoms. Very rarely patient can present with you uh, to you with anuria. Anuria is, they say ki it's been long, maybe 6 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours, I haven't passed urine. I'm having pain and after that I didn't pass urine till now. That's a very dreadful condition. Such scenario happens when the stone is blocking both the ureters. So that's, the patient may present to you with anuria. The other symptoms could be fever and other kind of symptoms. The most common question which I get from my patients is uh, how or why a stone is formed in kidney. See basically the explanation for that is our kidney used to excrete a lot of chemicals from the body which includes sodium, potassium, calcium, oxalate, uric acid. All these chemicals are being excreted from the body in the form of urine. So when your body there are excess of chemicals or the Basically, you know, your kidney has got few chemicals which prevent stone disease, which are called as stone inhibitors and few chemicals which promote the stone disease, which are called as stone promoters. So when there is a misbalance between these two, when there are less inhibitors and lot of promoters, you can develop a kidney stone. 
and other causes for stone formation the most common cause is dehydration your less water intake is there less excretion of water so less accumulation of uh, more accumulation of the salts and leading to stone formation the second common cause could be your other reasons like obesity you are having recurrent urine infections you have got some anatomical abnormalities where the urine has not been excreted properly from the kidneys there are a lot of other dietary factors lot of hereditary factors which lead to the stone formation what are the investigation for the kidney stone investigation means how do we diagnose so most common investigation for kidney stone is ultrasound but the sensitive for the ultrasound is very less It's sensitive for the ultrasound to detect the stone is around 50 to 60 percent. Sometimes when the stone is smaller, it's not seen on the ultrasound. The most common thing, it's very commonly seen in my practice when a patient gets an ultrasound done by two doctors on the same day. There may be changes in the stone size also. So that's why the ultrasound is not 100 percent sensitive. It can detect the stone or it can give you some indirect signs like I cannot able to see the stone, but there is some hydronephrosis. second investigation for the kidney stone is x-ray x-ray also 60 to 80% stones are radio opaque which are seen on the x-ray 10 to 20% of the stones are not seen on the x-ray the ideal investigation or the the investigation which can give you 100% confirmation of the stone disease is a ct scan normally we do a plain ct scan some cases we do need a contrast ct scan Do few other basic investigations your doctor will be doing, which includes the urine test to look for any blood in urine or infection, a basic blood test and a kidney function test, which called it a creatinine to check whether because you will be getting lot of painkillers for the pain, so that tests are mandatory for the doctor. Treatment for kidney stone, it's basically divided in two parts. One is medical management, other is surgical management. so basically the decision maker is the stone size and stone stone location so a stone anywhere in the body say kidney ureter if it is less than 5 mm we go for a medical management because with that smaller size of stone the expulsion rate for the stone is almost 80 to 90% for a period of say 3 weeks to 4 weeks with medical management the stone used to pass it off 80 to 90% chances are there a stone bigger than 5 mm say 5 to 10 mm still initial medical management can be tried provided the other investigations are within normal limits now surgical management basically depends on the stone size or if it has been long maybe maybe a 2 months or 3 months patient is on medical management is not able to pass the stone he can he'll be given a surgical option the options of surgical management includes it's basically where the stone is if the stone is in urethra it can be treated endoscopically in the bladder it can be treated endoscopically with laser we call it cystolithotripsy if the stone is in ureter any part of the ureter can be treated endoscopically which is called as ureteroscopic lithotripsy stone inside the kidney you got two three options for the treatment of kidney stone the most commonly and the most recent advanced technique for the kidney stone management is rirs that is retrograde intrarenal surgery which we do with the help of a flexible ureteroscope we go from the normal urinary passage up to the kidney fragment the stone with laser and remove the fragments or we dust the stone another technique for the kidney stone management if the stone is bigger than 2 cm or a larger stone we go for pcnl that is percutaneous nephrolithotripsy where a small keyhole surgery has been like we do a small hole in the kidney in the back without any suture we fragment the stone and we remove the stone these are the all advanced technique for the kidney stone management uh, the diet tips and uh, things what to do to prevent the stone disease most common thing and most advisable thing will be drink plenty of water See, ideally, you should be passing three liters of urine in a day. So, if you're working in a hot weather or you're roaming around in a hot weather, you should drink more water than three liters. Or if you're doing a office or household work, three liters of water intake in a day is good enough. Second advice will be decrease salt in your diet. What amount of salt is required is in the food. You should be avoiding a added salt things. There should not be any extra added salt in your diet. third thing 
decrease oxalate contained in your diet foods which are rich in oxalate should be decreased like lot of nuts we say cashew nuts pista badam akrot those things should be reduced in your diet diets uh, vegetables which are high in oxalate should be reduced fourth thing you should decrease your red meat intake the which is animal protein we call it decrease the amount of animal protein in your diet fifth thing is uh, you should not be having less calcium there should be adequate calcium intake in your diet so things which are good in calcium i say milk milk products should not be stopped it should be continued in your diet thank you friends so please continue watching my channel and do subscribe for more informative videos on on urological diseases thank you